for now. Okay, says so recording. So I'm going to say that one more time. All right, so whether you're here with me live or you're watching the recording, if you want the recipe card and you're not on the email list, um, send me your email address. Either message it to me or email it to me. Get it over to me somehow. So, and I'll put you on the list. I email out about once a week when I'm on my game. Um, less than that, but no more than once a week. Unless there's something really important, which I think happened once. Um, all right, so today is the dairy-free peanut butter cheesecake. And I wanted to let you all know that don't think that it's going to taste exactly like cheesecake. It's freaking good. It's absolutely delicious, but nothing replaces the cheesecake. So the cheesecake, like the real dairy. So I always test all of my recipes on my husband and my son, because they will absolutely tell me the truth and they won't lie to me and say it's good when it's not. So when I asked my husband if it tastes like cheesecake, he goes, no. I said, does it taste like flavored cheesecake, like peanut butter cheesecake? He goes, yes. He goes, but it, it doesn't have that dairy creaminess to it. He goes, it has a different kind of creaminess to it. It's a light creamy where it's not heavy. I said, all right. He goes, but mind you, keep, keep in mind, it's absolutely freaking delicious. I'm like it is, right? He goes, yeah, and you can totally get away with calling it cheesecake. So I took it over for the first time. We had a holiday party in like mid-December. My entire family was there. And once they started raving over it, then I told them it was gluten-free and dairy-free. And they're like, what? And I said, yeah, even Christina can eat it because I made it grain-free. And so she eats it. She's like, oh my God, it's absolutely delicious. And it's so easy to make. So I want to go over a couple of the um, ingredients that are important to use. This is the first one. We're going to soak cashews in coconut milk. When you're soaking cashews, all the recipes that you'll see online, they're going to call for you to soak the cashews in water, which works perfectly fine. But I wanted a creamier, hold on. Okay. I wanted a creamier um, texture to it. I'm like, there's got to be a way to make it creamier. So I soaked the cashews in coconut milk. Um, mm -hmm. I think I dipped it out with a little almond milk. And then depending on what you're going to do with that cream, you'll add your maple syrup and your vanilla flavoring. So this is the coconut milk that I found that works the best. And I keep it around and I use it for everything. If you saw me make the um, coffee cake, I put this coconut milk in with, they're still coming in the in the uh, waiting room, hold on. I put this coconut milk in with just the dry powder of the fudge brownie mix. And it was, it's amazing what you can do with this. So let me show you. I'm gonna go over to, I have another camera over here. So you can see things close up. Is, is so it I don't coconut? know if you want me pinned or if you want this camera pinned. We wanna go back and is forth. It? So look. This coconut milk, it's called, it's not even called coconut cream, is like cream. It doesn't taste like much, but it's cream. It's not water. There's a little bit of water at the bottom of the can, but most of this can is all cream. It's amazing what you can do with this stuff. And it doesn't taste like much. It's not very coconutty at all. And the brand, I'll hold it up to this camera, is that Thai kitchen. So... Mm -hmm. This, they sell at Costco. Wait, for a paper towel. Okay. This, they sell at Costco. You can get a whole box of these cans. They last forever. I keep them in the pantry and I use them for everything. So what I do is I take one of these raw cashews. You have to do raw. You can't do the roasted. It, it won't work. So this is nine ounces of cashews to one can of coconut milk put them together in one of these doohickeys and let it and heat it up. I heat it up for like two minutes in the microwave, not too hot. You don't want to melt the plastic, but just heat it up. So it's warm and leave it on your counter. And I would say in about 30 minutes to an hour, everything is soft. Now you can soak your whole cashews in the milk, or I found another trick, which makes it easier. Grind up your cashews first and then put them in the coconut milk, heat it up, let it soak. And then you're gonna take your um, immersion blender, one of those stick blenders. I'll show you what it looks like. One of these stick blenders 
And this is what's going to make it creamy. I don't know how much this is. I'm sure I didn't spend a lot. Or if it is expensive, I got it as a gift. I still didn't buy it. But this is what I use to make it really creamy. And you're going to blend it with this for longer than you think. The longer you do it, the creamier it gets. So you got your cashews and your coconut milk in here. You grind, you grind it all up. It's creamy and doesn't really taste like much. This is where you have options. You can turn this into an Alfredo sauce by adding garlic and lemon, because like I said, the coconut, you really don't taste this. Makes for the creamiest Alfredo pasta, whatever you're gonna make with a cream oh, sauce. Um, we don't do a lot of cream sauces around here. I think I did it once just to test it. It was just once um, and it worked beautifully. But when I do pasta, I want olive oil, I want, po I want tomato sauce, but when you want creamy, you, this is your base. I also use this for my coffee creamer. So I flavored it last week with almond extract and maple syrup, delicious. But I don't like it as much as I like the vanilla extract and the cinnamon and the maple syrup. Keep this in the fridge. It should last you a long time. I put one scoop in and it lightens up my coffee like regular half and half. Because I think you guys know if you use any kind of non-dairy coffee creamer, it barely changes the color of your coffee, like barely. This is the only thing that actually lightens the, the coffee. And if you need more maple syrup, you need it sweeter, you don't want the cinnamon, you can really play around with this. It's absolutely delicious. And the only non-dairy coffee creamer that I found that actually like thickens the coffee, lightens it and makes it taste really good. So now onto the cheesecakes. So this is soaking. I'm going to probably use this for coffee creamer this week because we're going to go over to the cheesecakes now. The first thing that you want to do is make your base for the cheesecake. Now, normally I would make, like I show you in the picture, a cheesecake in this little cheesecake thing. And we put the crust down first. We're going to put the crust down first in muffin tins because I am preparing for coming home from the hospital and I want all of this shit in bags. Oh shit, I hit, forgot, did I hit record? No, I did hit record. I should stop cursing. Okay, let me let somebody else in who's in the waiting room. Okay, all right. And listen, if anyone has any questions, I can't see everybody because there's so many people on here. So like, don't raise your hand or anything, just start talking and I'll, and I'll stop talking so we can hear you. All right, so I'm making mini cheesecakes because when these are done, I want to put them in a baggie in the freezer and have them for like a nice grab and go when I'm home with the baby. Hopefully next week. Arden, if you have any information on that, you go right ahead and share. Yes, next week we're doing Sunday. Okay, cool. All right, we've got our money on Sunday. <laughs> he starts kicking when you say that. I love it. Okay, okay, okay. I gotta focus. What are we doing? We're doing crust. All right, so... We're making minis. I'm going to put this over here. Uh, the crust that I made at Christmas time, I, this is so much easier to sit down. I used this brand of grain-free cookies because my sister is grain-free. So I used these and some coconut oil, and it was delicious. Could it have been better? Absolutely. These cookies aren't great, but it made it grain-free. We don't have to be grain-free. We just have to be gluten-free. So what you would normally do for this crust, if you wanted to, is use nuts, pecan, I like pecans, but you can use whatever you want, walnuts, whatever. Nuts and dates. Dates hold it all together. Dates are what make that nice, compact, um, moist texture. But they didn't have any dates at Costco last week and I used all but four dates the week prior when I was making the Snickers. Um, I have four left and selfishly, I want more Snickers. So I have my chocolate melting over there. I'm saving my, my four remaining dates so that I can make Snickers when we get done with this call. So I improvise all the time with this crust. I just want it to taste good. And I got to use up this shit in my pantry anyway, right? Cause we buy all this stuff from Costco. It's really good, but then no one finishes it cause they're on to the next thing. Um, and I'm not even talking about my kids. That's usually, it's usually me. So last night when I pre-made these, or I can show you later, um, I used these heavenly hunks. I had like two left over. I had a couple left over of these. 
And then I've had these in the pantry forever. They're stale as hell. They're gluten-free Oreos. So. <clears throat> What I do is because they're stale, <clears throat> let me go to the other camera now, open them up, scrape off the cream and stick them in. Now, I'm only using the one side that doesn't have the cream, right? And I'm throwing away the other side because apparently nobody likes these Oreos. So Janine, this is gonna be it's gone. Well, there's gonna be Janine, it's done. So I don't want a um, ton of these. Yeah. Because the ingredients statement, although it's gluten free, is shit. But I want that chocolate flavor in there. Janine, so I'm just Janine. gonna stick them in my little um, blender it's thing. It's okay. It's and then okay. I'm gonna take my pecans. <laughs> then I'm gonna take. I have some leftover cashews that I've been eating way too much of. She must have a music. Wow. It's gonna get loud for a second. I'm gonna go blend this up because I want to show you how it all comes together. I just texted her. Thanks, Janet. I was just going to be right. goofy and say it's something it's silly it's about the Oreos. So, <laughs> so I'm going to take this mixture and it, do you see in the camera here? It doesn't stay together. It's all, it's all, it's all you got. Oh, oh boy. And I want to teach you a little bit about coconut oil. Most of you probably already know this, but just for the ones that don't, there's two types of coconut oil that you can use. <clears throat> You've got your refined and your unrefined. All your coconut oil should be organic, virgin. Organic and virgin should be all of your coconut oil. But then there's refined. Oh, Janet, yeah, go ahead. You can't what hear you us. You can't hear Why? us. You can't hear me? I can hear you. You can't hear us. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Hold on. Let me check. I think she has what? us all muted. What the hell happened? Oh. Let me see something. All right. Janine, here, can test. Me? Can you hear? Can you hear? Yes. Unmute. It's on. Oh, okay. Tell me when you can hear me. We can hear you. You can hear us. I can hear you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right, I'm gonna check my, oh, oh. Okay, what about now? We can hear you, can you hear us? Now I can hear you, yeah. Okay. Okay, what good. About the whole, what about the whole time? Could you have heard me the whole time? Yes, we heard okay. you, but you didn't we hear, hear you. us. We hear you. You hear us. I thought I it was oddly quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, nobody even has any background noise? Like, really? Oh my God, I heard you to keep going. No one wants to talk. <laughs> so, Janet, thank you for doing this. That got my you're attention because you're like front and center right here. Did I miss any questions? Did you guys, were you trying to get my attention? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no? Okay, good. Dawn had no. about the Oreos. Oh, I was just going to say, I don't know how your Oreos are stale because those babies don't last longer than like two days at my place. So, <laughs> you know what, even when I was um, eating gluten like 10 years ago, I didn't like Oreos. So I guess I never had them in the house for my kids to eat. I don't know. It's weird. I know. It's really weird. <clears throat> All right. So we got the Oreos in. 
All right, thank you for that. I'm so glad we can talk now. Mm -hmm. It was freakish and silent. All right, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so two different types of coconut oil, refined or unrefined. Now, the refined coconut oil, this one, refined coconut oil removes all the flavor of the coconut. It's still good shit, but it does not taste like coconut oil. So you can fry with it, you can bake with it, and you're not gonna change everything over to change to tasting like coconut. If you want the unrefined stuff, it's it's pure white, whereas this one's like a little off white. It's pure white and tastes like coconut. So you kind of don't wanna fry your vegetables in this because it's gonna taste like coconut, unless you like that, that's fine too. So if you're not using the dates, use some melted coconut oil. And I used, I used the regular stuff because I don't mind the coconut flavor. And I don't measure anything, as you know. Yeah, that works. Here, I'll stick it under here. So you just want it to the point where when you pack it down, it stays because you're gonna stick these in the freezer anyway. And we all know that when coconut oil gets cold, it gets hard. So this is perfect. It doesn't have to be like real moist. So real quick, you just make a little crust. Who's got their TV on? I can hear it. Not that I mind it. I'm just saying I can hear it. When, when there's a lot of uh, overspill, it blocks you out. All right. We need some people who I think it might be. Cannot move the video. Cannot move. No, I don't want to move the video. Well, who's ever had the TV on, they just lowered it. Thank you. All right. That's better. Um, okay. Cool. All right, cool. I'd so much rather hear you guys than have it be that silent. I'm like, wow, maybe they're nervous. <laughs> All right, so you put your crust in. And like I said, if you were using like a regular pie tin, you would just pack your, you know, in the, in the, in the spring form. So last night I made extra. So I want to show you what this looks like. So I took... Hold on. So I took the soaked cashews and I added peanut butter to this. I added a little coconut oil in the peanut butter, melted that all up, stuck it in here after I, I ground it up, um, maple syrup, and that's it. Your maple syrup is your only sweetener. It's not... all sorts of measurements on there for you, but I don't do that every time. And I don't ever follow it every time either. It's always different. Um, and I taste as I go. So I'm talking through this last night. You're going to see in a second what I made last night. Um, I did it in probably 20 minutes, start to finish. It was all done. This is really quick. So I took this, I added all of my ingredients to it, made my little cupcake things. And then this is what I have left. Look at this. Oh my God. Look how thick this is. This is your peanut butter cheesecake. So you're gonna fill up your cups or your, your pie as much as you want. Um, if you want a thinner cheesecake, like I'm talking not thin as in consistency, like a thinner one like this, um, just use what I said, use one of these and one of these. Last time I made it, I wanted it nice and high. I wanted it to look like a professional one. Two of these, two cans of these. That's how easy it is. And I think that's the one that's on the recipe card because um, I made it nice and high. All the pictures that you see that I've been posting, I made that one and I used the two and the two. So we're gonna finish filling these. And I'm gonna show you what the finished product looks like. And as soon as we get off of this call, I won't bore you with it now. I'll finish doing these. So I'll have close to 24 in the freezer. And hopefully they'll still be there when I get home from the hospital. I won't have eaten them all. I usually leave them in the back of the freezer so that no one can see them. Because if they see them, they're gone. All right, so at this point, these are going to harden and 
You're, you can stick them in the refrigerator or the freezer. I like to leave them in the freezer because now I want to show you what the frozen ones look like and how to decorate them. It's to make them taste really good and they look really professional. I'm going to have to get up. I'm losing, I'm losing space. Okay, so these I did last night. These are frozen. Like I said, it took me like 20 minutes and we're going to have fun right now. I'm going to show you how to decorate them. You seen that camera? Yeah. Okay. Um, where's my bag? Here. Good. Okay. We're all set. So far, so good. Let's have uh, it. Okay. So I have a chocolate melter. It's a little Wilton chocolate melter right there on the counter. I don't think you can see it, but it's easy. You just put it on, it melts the chocolate and then you put it on warm and then it stays at like the perfect temperature. I've had it for 10 years. I use it all the time, especially with kids. You put melted chocolate or you drizzle chocolate, melted chocolate on something and just makes it amazing. Um, but you don't have to have one to do this part. You can just use a double boiler or you can just microwave some chocolate. I think they say to do it in increments of like 30 seconds so that you don't um, overdo it and add in a little coconut oil. It makes it shiny. It makes it pretty. Do I take these out when I do it? Yeah, yeah, I do take them out. Okay, I had to think about that for a second. All right, so the chocolate that I use, I get a lot of questions about what chocolate do you use? I use whatever's on sale. I make sure that it's a good quality chocolate. Like this, I'm going to be, this for this time, I'm gonna be using what my husband got me for Valentine's Day, because my daughter told him to. She's so cute. So he went to Whole Foods, and if you guys, oh, someone's in the waiting room, hold on. I don't know who it, who it is, it just says Zoom user. Okay, so if you guys were on the coaching call yesterday, Tuesday, not yesterday, Tuesday? Yeah, um, it was with Matt Rowe. And so he asked about, we were talking about being triggered and you know what we do about it. And I said that I confront my husband. I was triggered. I was feeling really insecure. I felt like he was cheating on me because I'm nine months pregnant and that's just one of my thoughts all the time. So I asked him because we have GPS on each other, like the Life360. So after the gym, he went somewhere and I couldn't figure out where it was. So I'm like, so where'd you go after the gym? What's her name? Seriously, I'm nine months pregnant. You're going to do this? And I was like, I was kind of serious. Like there's one side of my mind that was like pretty freaking serious. And he just looks at me, he goes, well, her name is Whole Foods. And I went there to buy you chocolate for Valentine's Day. You know the chocolate I gave you about two hours ago? Yeah, it came from her, Whole Foods. <laughs> so, I was like, oh, thanks, love. I know I'm crazy. So the next day, yesterday, he's like, just to let you know, I'm going to Russ's house to pick him up so that we can go to the gym together. I'm like, all right, thank you for appeasing my crazy. So anyway, um, this is what he got from Whole Foods. It's the green and blacks. It's the 70%. And then it was the 65%. And if you look at the ingredient statement, cocoa liqueur, sugar, cocoa butter, soy lecithin, vanilla. That's it. That's on this one. And then same thing, organic bittersweet chocolate, chocolate liqueur, organic cane sugar, organic cocoa butter, organic vanilla extract. I, these are good. Like I want the really high, high dark, chocolate content because whatever I'm putting that on is usually very sweet. And then I like the high content because one, it's good for you. And two, you put a little bit of salt on top of that. It's amazing. But first there, but wait, there's more. All right. Before we get to the melted chocolate part, I also get these a lot. Mm. These are Justin's, yes. right? Yeah. Someone, yes. John, was that you? Yes. So freaking good. They make milk chocolate and dark chocolate. I don't like the milk chocolate so much. And plus it has that little bit of dairy in it. My husband eats these. I love these. So, oh, Janet, the um, Reese's cups that I made last week. Yes. I made a bunch of, yes, that would have been Amazing. perfect to eat, right? Amazing. Yeah. 
Chatty lives down the block from me. She's the only one here who lives close. So when I make stuff, I usually try to drop it off to her. So I made the those. I mean, cake, I the, the coffee cake was just so sick. good. It's sick. It's insane. And it's weird that it's gluten free, dairy free. It's just weird that it's that we can eat it because it's it's that good. Um, I'm chopping these up, by the way. So my son comes out and he digs into the coffee cake. He's like, what the hell is this? And why is it so good? I'm like, I know, right? It's, it's crazy good. So I forgot to record that Zoom. But the recipe card is in the files section. Or I emailed it to you. All right, so I just chopped these up. And you wanna chop up a lot of them for the big cake little bit for these. I don't want to use a ton of these again, cause I'm going to eat, I'm going to eat them all. And I went to the doctor yesterday to get, you know, the, the regular weekly checkup and I got weighed. I'm like, Oh my God, let me take my boots off. Let me do it again. That can't be right. <laughs> I've gained 50 pounds. 50. My husband's like, it's the baby. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not having a 50 pound kid. Like, no, it's not. It's, it's my ass. It's my thighs. It's, it's everything. All right. Where are my spoons? So I want to show you one that you can see. Over here, perfect. All right, so you put a little bit of the Reese's peanut butter cup right in the middle. <coughs> Reminds me to tell you about the blueberry version. Okay, can everyone see that good? This is what makes it look pretty and taste delicious. All right, that paper towel is getting old. Hold on. Now, the chocolate that comes out of the chocolate melter is really freaking hot and it gets too runny. So you put it in a bag and just let it cool off just a little bit so it's not so runny. So it stays in like the nice little um, lines that we're about to make. This is gonna get messy once I cut it. Okay. Baggy, that's it, nothing special. A baggy with a tiny hole in the corner. I don't wanna mess this up, hold on. And I start out small, perfect. And then you just go over it like this. That's it. How pretty is that? Turn it upside down, Let's stick it right there. Oh crap, I made a mess already. Hold on. Now, this is, this is gonna go in the refrigerator. It's gonna harden up. I'm gonna do the rest of these when we're not on the Zoom, but that's it. And you don't even have to do this last part with the chocolate because they're delicious as they are. Now, bring it back a second. Remember when we were at this stage, before we added the peanut butter, before we added the maple syrup, the vanilla, it was just cashews and coconut. If you wanted to, you can just add maple syrup and vanilla to this and then put it in the cups, right? So this is gonna be your plain cheesecake. But then what I do is I top it with our blueberries, our wild blueberries that we, we use. You just put some blueberries in a bowl, coat them with maple syrup, get a lemon, zest the lemon, mix that all together, and then keep it in the, the tin right here, because this will hold it. And then you just put the blueberries right on top of here. It's freaking delicious is unbelievable because this is light, it's creamy, it's a little sweet. And then you've got the like the freshness of the berries with it, the blueberries. So I'm sure you can do a lot of other variations with other fruits, but that's just what I've done in the past. So these are already hardening. Janine, yeah. how much peanut butter did you put in the base, the cashews? I missed that. Is that. A, oh, I, I forgot the salt, so I'm answering, I'm gonna put a little salt on there. Um, yeah, you missed it because I didn't say it. <laughs> because I don't measure anything. I don't know. Um, the recipe card, the one, the first time that I did this, I'm just sprinkling a little salt on there because it just makes the chocolate delicious. Janet, I think, I think I'm leaving the house today. I got to get a pedicure because if I deliver this weekend, I don't want my, my toes up there in those stirrups looking the way they're looking right now. They're gnarly. <laughs> So I got to go get those things done. So if I do that this afternoon, I'll drop some of these off to you. Okay, thank um, you. Arden, even though I have it on the recipe card, there's the amount on there. 
<laughs> do what you like because some people just want a little bit of a peanut butter flavor. So you just add like a scoop, mix it in, taste it. But then my husband, he asked next time I make them, if I could put a ton more peanut butter in it. So he wants a whole bunch in there. So as you're, as you're making it, just taste it as you go along and stop when you like it. Um, that's my rule for all of my cooking. Taste it, keep going or stop. It's just, that's how I, that's how I cook everything. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So that's it guys. This is your cheesecake. These are, there are so many different variations that you can make. You can leave this stuff in the freezer forever, though it doesn't last that long. So I don't actually know how long it lasts. Um, but I, I wanted to show you, you can still lo absolutely love your food, love your desserts. Um, look forward to your desserts. Be proud to bring your desserts to your family gatherings or, or when you have dinner parties. You have to love your food. Just because you're going gluten-free, dairy-free, and egg-free, most people think, okay, I got to get in the mindset of I need motivation. I need to stay you know, on track. No. When you're living the rest of your life, when it's starving, killing, and detoxing the virus out, there's, there's no on track to stay there. You just live your life. So I got asked a question the other day. Um, it wasn't Jen. I just responded to her. It was Jamie. And I don't think she's on here. Jamie Summers. Yeah. She's not on here. Um, she said, what are the staples? What are your staples for living gluten-free? And I'm like, Oh no, that's not a thing. What are your staples right now? You tell me what your staples are in your pantry, refrigerator, freezer, whatever. And I'll tell you what good brands of gluten-free version you should go buy. <laughs> you should never change anything. If you wanna live on pizza and ice cream, you're gonna heal a lot slower. But as long as it's gluten-free pizza and dairy-free ice cream, you can still heal your body. It's gonna be slow. But what I'm saying is the gluten and the dairy and the eggs, that's what feeds the virus, right? <laughs> we, want to, we want to starve the hell out of that bastard because what does that bastard do, the Epstein-Barr virus, what does he do? He emits um, that smoke screen that evades, it's able to evade your immune system with. So think of the octopus that inks in the ocean to prevent its predators from, from finding it. That's what the virus does. It emits a smoke screen so your immune system can't see it. When you weaken the shit out of this, it no longer emits that smoke screen, which means your immune system that you are working so hard to build up with antioxidants and good food can now kill it. So you're starving it by not giving it its food, its gluten, its dairy, and its eggs. You're starving it by not giving it its heavy metals because you're cleaning them out of your body every day. You're bringing up your immune system to now find it, be able to see it and kill it. And through your celery juice and your lemon water your de and your heavy metal detox, you're detoxing it out of your body because even a dead corpse of that virus is a, not, is a neurotoxin and will give you symptoms. So the virus on its own can live for six weeks, right? But you wanna starve it and shorten that time. It's also gonna take a little while to get out of your body. So gluten I find feeds the virus more so than dairy or eggs. If you accidentally eat dairy or eggs, it has been my experience and the experience of my clients that it doesn't set you back six weeks. Only the gluten does. So the first thing that you wanna do when you're figuring out how you're gonna eat, read the labels, see what has gluten in it and replace those right away. Find yourself a really good gluten-free pizza if that's your thing. Gluten-free bread, bagels. Um, I had a bagel and cream cheese this morning for breakfast. It was so good. Um, I don't do that often, but I'm like, I'm like off the wagon. I'm like, all right, I'm going to eat whatever the hell I want when I want. Yes, it's all gluten-free, but I'm just living on carbs these days. Well, now it's going to be carbs and cheesecake. <laughs> so um, does anyone have any questions about anything that I've said so far? And remember, I can't see all of you. So if you do, like, say something, cough, or say, Janine, stop talking. Janine, I kind of came in a little bit late, but I was curious, um, the coffee creamer, was that just the raw cashews and the coconut milk? 
You could do that here. This is the raw cashews and the coconut milk in this one. Okay. You could do that and it would lighten your coffee, but it wouldn't flavor it very well. It's just going to lighten it. So my mother-in-law who just uses plain half and half, um, she likes this. My husband, her husband, um, we like it flavored so and sweetened. So I put the maple syrup in here and the vanilla extract. Oh. Or, oh, and cinnamon. Yeah, I love the cinnamon in here too with the coffee. But then last week, like I said, I did the, um, it was like a hazelnut flavor. I did the almond extract and the maple syrup. It was good. I didn't love it. it the, the almond flavor didn't come through in the coffee enough. Uh, so I think this week I'm going to do the vanilla and the maple syrup when we get off here. But yeah, that's all it is. Those few oh ingredients. It's, I'm telling use, you, it's so good. Oh, I usually use just half and half. And right now I'm using oat milk. But I literally have to fill my coffee cup like that full of oat milk to get it lightened. And it it changes the flavor, but at the same time, it's still not light enough. And I'm like, yeah. a, you know, like, I like my, my coffee like I like my husband. <laughs> you know, like, I like it light and strong, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah. and you have to put in so much oat milk in order to lighten it, and then you've got weak coffee, right? right. So you have to learn how to like. What are you going to do? Like change your coffee? Because look at what we're working with. If you get this brand or find another brand that actually looks like this, this cream I'm going to stick it under there is so freaking thick. Look at that; it's amazing. I mean, what's the brand? So when you're adding the crushed up cashews to that, that those crushed up cashews add like a body almost to the coffee, just like half and half does. So between the cream, the, the powdered up cashews, this is the absolute best creamer that anything, anything that I could buy ever. I know I always loved cashew milk. Like when I could find that, I loved it. It was so creamy and so good. And just FYI, somebody had asked what the brand was while you were talking. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Thai Kitchen. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, Rhonda, that was you. I can see you. You're right there. Hi. Um, and they sell that at Costco. So oh, most good. of the things that I, yeah, it's wonderful. It, it's in a box of like six. You throw it in the pantry. It lasts forever. Good. I'm going to say most of this stuff, except for the raw cashews, you, I, you get at, um, at Costco. Raw cashews are in like a very specific spot in my grocery store, Stop and Shop. They're freaking hard to find because they're always moving them. Um, and they don't sell them at Costco because no one wants them because they don't taste good. <laughs> Everyone wants the roasted nuts, which I don't blame them. Um, yeah, and if anyone tries like to make like any of this stuff, if you want to post pictures, that would be great because I love how many people made the um, the Snickers and the variations that they made with them. Like Quinn, where are you? You were here before. You made the um, Snickers with your kids with the sprinkles. I was like, oh, that's a fun idea. And I wanted to ask you, did they like eating them as much as they like making them? Do they like the flavor? You're muted and I know you're driving, so don't crash. If you can unmute, great. If you can't, just be like, Janine, I can't. I'll, I'll text you later. Okay, let's not bother him. He's driving. Um, but the Snickers, they're just so much, they're so much like the real thing. And that's another thing. You have to fill yourself up, especially when you're starting this diet. You have to fill yourself up with the shit food that you're used to. You can't be deprived. And like I said, sugar does not feed the virus. It inflames the shit out of your body. Yes, it's not good for you. Yes, other things happen. But when we're trying to heal from MS, we need to kill the virus. And sugar does not feed the virus. So when you need your sugar, freaking have it. Have your sugar. Okay. But don't have as much as me and gain 50 pounds in nine months. That's, that's not good. All right. Did I talk about everything that I wanted to? If you think I did, the blueberries... I did that. All right. So, well, before these melt, I'm going to get going on these. Anyone have anything before we go? No, you're all good. No. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Thank, Thank you. You're very welcome. It's so Bye. nice to see everybody. It's so different Bye. on the live. Thank right. you, Janine. I'll, I'll download this recording. You're very welcome. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.